Hi, welcome to this video tutorial for Ivy Corporation case, which is a case about job cost analysis. I'm Dr. Wendy Teets, and I'm going to walk you through what you need to know. First of all, you have a data set. We are in Excel. Um, the data set that I'm using here will be different from the one that you have, but the fields will all be the same. So we have job number, customer number, customer name, sales rep, facility, country, general ledger account, and amount. Now, amounts, something to note, the amounts are negative if it is a, an expense. If it's a revenue, it's positive. So that's just something good to know um, for when we're working on this. So the requirements tell us to answer, um, we have four requirements, and each requirement asks us a series of questions. Requirement one says that we need to know the totals of total revenue, total direct materials used and all of that. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a pivot table to answer each of the requirements. So let's first of all start with our first pivot table. We are going to insert when we're in our data anywhere. We are going to click insert in the ribbon, click pivot table, and then we're going to accept the default. So now we've created the shell of a pivot table. The requirements also tell us to rename our worksheet with pivot table name. So I'm going to rename it before I go any further. And I'm going to call this pivot table one. Okay, so I'm going to click back in my pivot table. And over here on the right hand side, you see the pivot table fields panel. If that ever disappears, just click back in your data. It'll come back. If that doesn't work, you can click up here on the pivot table analyze ribbon on field list and it will appear. Now I'm going to enlarge my font so you can see it a little bit better in the video what I'm doing. Now, the videos or the requirements say that we need the total revenue, total direct material used, etc. All of that is in that field called general ledger account. That's what distinguishes what the item is. So I'm going to drag that down to rows. And you see now my pivot table has revenue, direct material, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. So then the only thing that I'm missing are the amounts. So I'm going to drag this amount down here and that should give us dollar amounts so what we have now is we have total revenue total direct material total direct labor total manufacturing overhead now because our expenses are negative our revenue is positive this grand total here represents gross profit again your numbers will be different than mine the one last requirement before leaving this before completing this table is we need to format all the dollars as accounting format zero decimal places. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my data here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to click value field settings here. And this is a different way of formatting when you're in a pivot table than what you're used to in Excel. Once you click on value field settings, click on no number format. And then once you're there, click accounting, change it to two decimal or zero decimal places. Sorry. Click OK. And then OK one more time. And you'll see we have our pivot table formatted with dollar signs. We have the four, we're answering the five different questions. We've got total revenue, total direct material used, total direct labor used, total manufacturing overhead applied and total gross profit and we're done with pivot table one so let's go back to our data now pivot table two in the requirements asks us what is the total revenue total direct material direct labor total manufacturing overhead and total gross profit for each country and for each state or province so let's go back and we're going to insert another data uh, pivot table so we're going to insert pivot table and we're going to accept the defaults. And again, just like we did before, we're going to right click. We're going to rename that pivot table to Okay. And so there we've renamed it. And now we've got to start populating our pivot table. So I'm going to make it a little bigger so we can see it here. And what I'm going to do is for my columns, I want the general ledger accounts. 
So I'm going to go over here, select my, and put those in the columns. Feel free to experiment with dragging different fields and see what you get. So now I have a column for each of the different um, types of revenues or expenses. And now I'm going to, in rows, drag down country, because that was one of the questions. And then I'm going to drag down facility to below country. Because what that's going to do for me, look what that just did. It split Canada and US. And then within each one of those, it has the provinces. So in my data set here, I have British Columbia and Ontario in Canada. And I have North Carolina and Texas in the US. And then the final thing is, I don't have any numbers in here. So I'm going to drag the, um, I'm going to drag amount down to values. And look, I have my pivot table. The final thing I need to do is I need to format my pivot table, table data. So I'm going to select it. I'm going to do value, value field settings, number format, Wait for it to pop up. Accounting, zero decimal places. Click OK. OK again. And there we are. So we have our pivot table done. And what we've done for requirement two is we have answered the question, um, what's the total revenue, total direct material for each country? And that would be, so we have the Canada line, which is right here. That's the total of each of those expenses and revenues by country. We have the U.S. in this row. Um, and then it also says which manufacturing facility has the most gross profit, which has the least. And we can, because we don't have that many here, we can just eyeball it. We can say, okay, so which manufacturing facility that's over gross profit is in the grand total column so we can select which one has the most in this sample texas had the most which has the least that would be british columbia and so you can go through and answer those questions this pivot table will answer we'll be able to get all your answers from there okay so let's go back to our data we're going to do another pivot table and now we're looking at requirement three Requirement three is asking us what's the revenue generated by each job? What are the totals for each job? What's the gross profit generated by each job? Um, so we're really focused on jobs. So again, we're going to insert pivot table, accept the defaults. I'm going to rename this pivot table three. Okay. And then I'm going to make the font a little bigger so we can see it better. Okay, so now we are focused on job. So again, for my columns, I want my general ledger account. So I'm going to pull that down to columns, and you see I have the general ledger account across the top. And then the next thing is I want to focus on the job number. So I'm going to go up here, grab job number, and put it in rows. So what we have right now is we have the jobs in the um, each row is a separate job. And now we just need the dollar amount. So we're going to put amounts down in values. Okay. And I'm going to make the font a little bit smaller so it shows. There, it shows on one screen. Okay. So what we have here is we have each job listed. And we have the total revenue, direct material, direct labor, manufacturing overhead, and the grand total, which is we could rename it gross profit, but we're just going to leave it for now. The last thing we need to do is format all the dollar amounts, all the as accounting format. Now be sure not to format job number, which is over in column A, because that's not a dollar amount. So we're going to do um, value field settings, and we're going to click number format. And when that pops up, we'll select accounting with zero decimal places. Click OK. Click OK again. And we have our pivot table done. Now, so what it allows us to do is by job, it's telling us here's the total revenue, total direct labor, and the gross profit for each job. Now, 
So we, we can answer what's the total, the revenue generated by each job, what's the total cost of each job, what's the gross profit generated by each job. Now, which job generated the most gross profit, which generated the least gross profit? Well, in my example here, it's pretty easy to tell. But when you do the case, you're actually going to have um, too many to eyeball. So what you'll have to do is you'll have to sort. So to sort, we're going to go over here to the gross profit column, that grand totaled column. We're going to right click, we're going to click sort, and we're going to sort from largest to smallest, and you see our most profitable job is at the top there. And we could look down to see the least profitable, but again, when you do this, you'll have a lot more data than I do. So maybe just right click again, click sort, and we're going to sort smallest to largest, so then smallest is on top. Okay, so that does it for requirement three. So we're going to go back into our data. We're going to insert one more pivot table, except the defaults, and this is pivot table four. So we're going to rename it as pivot table four. Okay, we'll make it the font a little bigger so we can see it better here. Okay, that should be good. Okay, so now what this one's asking, it's asking for the sales revenue generated by each sales rep, which sales rep generates the most revenue, which generates the least, and how much is from Canada, how much is US. So we're going to answer several questions. So let's let's first of all build our pivot table. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag country down to rows. And again, you may find yourself experimenting with this because pivot tables are quite powerful and kind of uh, fun to play with actually and drag facility down. So what that does is it gives us Canada, it gives us the US, and then within each of those countries, it gives us the facilities. Now, we know that the amount is over in values. Okay, so far so good. Now, we are interested in sales reps. So let's go up here and pick sales rep and put in columns. Now see what happens? We have a sales rep for each column. And I believe in this data set that that makes sense. We don't have thousands of sales reps. We have a very limited amount of sales, number of sales reps. So what we have right now is we have the revenue generated by each sales rep. So if we wanted um, to look at Canada, if I go over here and click on the minus sign next to Canada and U.S., it'll flatten it out to just Canada and just U.S., and we can tell the totals for each sales rep by country. But then if you want to see by province or facility or by state, you just expand that. So that's pretty cool that way. Now that gives us the answers to what is the revenue generated by each sales rep which sales rep generates the most revenue, which generates the least, and we can do that. Um, again, how much of each sales rep revenue is generated from facilities in Canada, from facilities in the United States? Now, you can do this just like we have, but I'm gonna show you one more trick here. We can use a filter, and we're going to filter We've got it, we've got it answered right now, but we are going to, if we want, we can filter by, hmm, filter by general ledger number. Okay, let's do filter. Okay, so right now what this does is it, it gives us all the general ledger accounts. This is actually not by revenue. This is all, so I'm going to correct what I said previously. What we're looking at here is this is all the gross profit, right? Because remember, grand total for us is gross profit. So we've done everything correctly to now, but this is just gross profit. But the third requirement, um, or all the requirements talk about revenue only, and we only want revenue. And it was right now it's including gross profit. So what we can do is we can, we dragged general ledger account down to filter, okay, in the pivot table field panel. Now, if we go up here and we click on revenue, just select that, then click okay. And what that does is it only uses revenue. 
okay so we have in one click we have a, we have just looked at the revenue generated by each sales rep which makes sense sales reps are generally evaluated on the revenue they generate not the expenses because they have no control over those expenses so by putting the general ledger account over here in the fields table fields filter box and then going up to the filter box and selecting revenue, that allows us to see the revenue generated by each sales rep, not the gross profit generated by each sales rep. Our last thing to do on this table is to, to format all dollar amounts. I'm, again, I'm going to select them. I'm going to click value field settings, and I'm going to click number format. And once they're accounting, zero decimal places, click OK, and click OK again, and we have everything formatted. Once again, the reason we needed to add that filter to the table is what we were looking at before we added the filter was the gross profit because all the data is in the pivot table unless you filter some out. And what we did with the filter is we are including just revenue here. So that concludes this tutorial video and um, have a great day.